guys. It's Ashley Fields with Yoder de Rose. How is everybody doing? I turned the camera today so you guys can see the piece a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> because I am going to be doing some blending and things like that, I wanted y'all to have a good picture, as good as I can give it to you, um, of what exactly I'm doing. So, let's see. Okay, I think this is, we'll make it work. All right, y'all. Um, I'm going to go ahead and hop in and get started. Um, I did Windex this already, and I went ahead and put some tape down uh, because whenever I'm trying to do some blending in here, I'm going to kind of make a mess on all the other parts of this uh, around my snail. And so um, I went ahead and just threw some tape down so that I didn't mess up my uh, base coat. Uh, but if you guys are gonna do the same technique, I would say uh, do, do your shading, or your, excuse me, your blending on the snail before you paint the ladybug and, and paint the um, turtle with your base coat colors. All right, y'all, I am anybody who watched that uh, flamingo video yesterday, I'm gonna save this one. Um, whenever I'm doing blending, I told you guys that I like to use these Crafter's Choice uh, flat tip brushes. Um, I'm gonna stick with the three quarter inch. And when it comes to the sample, let me pull it over right quick because I wanna show you guys. Honestly, it was a stroke of luck um, that this kinda ended up working out. It was one of those things, my brushes were just too big. And it kinda, I don't know if you can see right here, notice that pink, how it ha kinda goes over here on the inside and then goes on the outside. Uh, so it was one of those things that I don't even know how I particularly created it. So I'm going to attempt to recreate it. Um, we'll see how well I do. But I want to say that I actually double loaded these brushes. Okay, so I have that light purple down here, y'all. Let me grab my paint roll or my paint cart. I totally forgot to roll my paint cart over here. And we know that when I'm doing blending, I do not use watered down paint. Okay. I'm gonna grab that uh, light purple, which is already that base. I need my shading purple. And then I used a little bit of shading pink. So y'all, this plate is just old. I've obviously used it before. Um, I'm just gonna put a little bit of these down. This is such a small area. You really don't need much paint at all. Start with a little bit. I don't want to, I keep wasting paint whenever I put them on a plate, y'all, because I just use too much. But, all right, so shading purple, uh, light purple, and shading pink. All right, so I'm going to start, uh, you know what, last time I started on the outside, I'm going to try to start on the inside. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that uh, three-quarter inch uh, Crafter's Choice flat tip brush, and I'm going to dip half in my shading pink. Can y'all see that? Half in that shading pink and the other half in that light purple. So this light purple is really the base color and then that shading pink is just the color I'm trying to bring in. So let me get that in here just a little better. I'm also gonna brush it out and just kind of start working it in my brush. There we go. Okay, so that's, see right here, this is exactly what I'm trying to get. I'm trying to get that good blend with their, kind of being a middle in there. All right. So let me see, how did I do this, y'all? I am gonna go, I'm trying to think, do I wanna go this? Yeah, I think I wanna go this way. I'm gonna start here and just start pulling that brush around. This is a, a very small area, so it's not the um, easiest thing to do with this curve. As you can see, I'm running out of paint. I'm gonna just come back, dab a little more. Notice my brush bristles are kind of laying down, so I'm gonna, Take it back over here and try to fan that back out to a flat uh, tip on there. And then I'm just going to kind of feed into those lines I already have. I'm noticing I don't have quite enough shading pink, so I'm going to just keep on really going over that line until I feel like it's working the way I want it to. Went over that line a little bit too much, y'all. I'm telling y'all, <laughs> whenever I did this sample, this was just one of, it was honestly the first time I'd even attempted the blending. And I, I honestly cannot tell you guys exactly what I did, uh, but it just turned out really cute, you know? So I'm trying to kind of recreate something that was almost an accidental uh, kind of thing. Y'all, I just turned that pink 
on the opposite side of that brush and kind of messed it up. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna reload, okay? Swipe it out just to flatten that brush back. And let's, uh, let me see, I'm trying to get this brush placement right. There we go. Y'all, as you can see, this one is giving me some trouble. But honestly, a lot of times, especially when this is happening, I just kind of got to be a little bit more patient and um, wait for that end result because that end result will turn out a lot better than it, I feel like it is looking for me at this exact moment. Okay, I'm gonna just pull some of that color out right there. I'm gonna leave that like it is right now. If I need to work on it a little bit, I sure will. Now I'm gonna switch to that other brush. This one still has a little water in it because I was using it earlier. And I'm gonna do the same thing, but now I'm gonna do it with that shading purple on one part and then that light purple on the other. Okay, so load it up on opposite ends. Flatten that out, getting it ready to come over here to our piece. So here I'm just gonna be falling around that edge. As soon as you start to run out of paint, just go ahead and pick up some more. Notice also as I'm doing this, that light purple that I had put down with that shading pink on the brush, I'm starting to really get that light purple. It's kind of mixing between that uh, pink and purple right here in the middle. I'm just going right back and forth over top of those strokes, just trying to blend that color in there. So pretty. Now I also ended up taking out a little bit of color right here. Come back in, just kind of blend it. Y'all, when you're trying to blend, it's really just playing with it. You know, you're just kind of uh, playing with your brush strokes and, and uh, messing with it until you get it where you want it, okay? Definitely not perfect by any means. Now, the harder part's gonna be getting this deep purple in the center, okay? But how's everybody doing today, y'all? I hope everybody's good. I don't know why I have let me close this out because I can see that there's comments up on my phone, but I can't see them down here. Okay. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Connie. So glad y'all are here. You love the blending. It looks so good. Hey, mom. Thank y'all. Hey, seriously, uh, this one on the inside is just, y'all, it's not turned out near as cute as I want it to. But, you know, how often does that happen for y'all too? Where it's like, man, um, I know what I want this to look like, but it's just not quite working out. So I'm gonna try it just a little bit more and I might end up trying to switch brushes uh, because I think the problem in the center is honestly that the brush is too big for the space that I have. Okay, I like that blend. Now I have to kind of get it to pull upward. So hold on y'all, let me see if I can find, uh, find a different brush that I think I could make work. I don't know. This is honestly going to just be a test and go. This one is, um, it's almost like a, it feels kind of like a mop brush, like really um, fanned out and thicker bristles. So I'm going to attempt to use this in the same motion just to kind of come up into, yeah, there we go. Kind of come up in there. Yes, see that? That's looking a little better to me. Y'all also on my sample, there was a, a, a spot here in the middle that looked kind of funky. And so what I do whenever I reach something like that where I feel like I like all the rest of the portions of it, but maybe I don't like one specific spot, that's okay. I put a highlight on top of it. You know, put a low light on top of it. Uh, uh, hey, Victoria, how are you, babe? Uh, let's see, Connie says, I love this purple. It'd be so helpful to have someone, or something doesn't work out like you plan because you see how to handle it. Exactly, and, you, and that's what I said, like on this one, those of you that were here when I first popped on, quite honestly, I don't even remember what brushes I used on here, but as you could see, like I went on the inside of the line here and then I went to the outside. And that was really because the brush I was using was too big. And so this kind of got created out of happenstance. It was one of those things that just ended up happening. It wasn't quite what I was going for, but it looked good. And so then when you're trying to recreate something that you really created on accident, it's hard. <laughs> uh, but I like the snail. I'm going to leave it. 
Now, I wanted to ask you guys, because this just dawned on me before I did the live, but y'all know I like dry brushing a lot. I was thinking though on this one, what if we blended some colors down here on the bottom instead of dry brushing, just so we can do something a little different. What do y'all think about that? I did, um, I posted the ladybug flower earlier. I did some blending on those petals and I really liked that color combination. So I kind of thought maybe at the bottom of this one, we can do a blended sign as opposed to a dry brush sign. Uh, let's see, Debbie, Debbie Barberi, I think it's time to visit Ashley and borrow her brushes. <laughs> Look, uh, so this is just one cup. These are like my, mostly my shaders and my flat tip brushes and script liners. But then I also have, I've got this. And then I also have a couple more little smaller ones that hold brushes. So y'all, I've got a lot. But it's also something you kind of accumulate over time, you know. Okay. Uh, so we're going to, let's do blending at the bottom. I just think it's fun. And let me out. Y'all mind. Give me one second. I'm going to wash these out underneath my sink. Uh, cause I don't have any, I need all of my brushes that I have. So give me one second. Okay. I just did a quick, quick rinse with water. I didn't even put any, uh, Murphy's oil in there. I only, if y'all notice whenever you're doing that technique, you're, you're keeping that paint really at the end of that brush. And so a quick rinse with water was just fine in this case. Let me get a napkin. I'm gonna try to get some of this excess water out of here. And I want to do some yellow blending, y'all. That flower turned out just so cute and I really liked the colors that I used. So uh, on the colors we're gonna do down here on um, our summertime, kind of um, a sign we're gonna do it's for the oranges or like the outside color I actually did a combination of shading orange and asterisk orange so I'm just gonna put some really I just kind of sat here and boop about 50 50 of one another okay this one I, I did do it with just this one and it's honestly too the this is your asterisk orange and it's a little bit too close to that shading yellow so there wasn't enough of a contrast but when I mixed it with uh, shading orange and asterisk orange together, that's when I really got that color that I really, really liked. So just about 50-50. Yeah, see, not too light, not too dark. There we go, I'm gonna leave that one. All right, and then we obviously are gonna have some shading yellow, and we are gonna have yellow. Now, I don't know if I can get white in here. If I can, I will, but we'll have to see how much space I have by the time we start doing this. Um, so my thought is, I, I was thinking instead of just doing, you know, the color at the bottom and fading up, I would do a stripe of color, a stripe of color, and kind of have it fading into the middle. So what I'm gonna do, again, y'all, I'm still obviously using uh, the three quarter inch brush. So I'm gonna dip it in that darker color, that's your asterisk orange and your shading orange together. And I'm just gonna, I'm actually picking up quite a bit of paint because I wanna, I wanna set it down and get it ready. Now remember guys, y'all need to have, you, you want some paint on there. You, you definitely don't want it where like this is too thin. You need it a good full coverage, but not so much that you have, you know, glops kind of coming off. I'm gonna try to keep my um, turtle's feet from getting too messed up, but we'll see. So if you guys attempt the blending technique, take it from me, do not base coat before, um, before you do that. Just put on your one color and then go ahead and get into that blending. Oh, I already picked up the wrong color, y'all. I went and picked up yellow. I'm not ready for yellow. All right, now we're going to that shading yellow. Same thing, I'm gonna pick up some of that color and I'm gonna lay down a stripe right next to that color, that um, shading orange and asterisk orange, okay? Just lay it right next to it. Remember, we talked about yesterday on that um, flamingo gnome. This will look kind of, you know, funky at first. All right, so I got my layers down. I'm using that brush that has the shading yellow on it to just start doing the blending. And to do the blending, what am I doing? I'm just taking that brush and going back and forth with the tip of kind of just the corner of this brush 
covering to the next color, okay? So I'm not taking my brush all the way to the end because I don't wanna wipe off that shading orange. I'm almost just kind of maybe going about, I don't know, a quarter inch over top of that shading orange to do this blending. So very light strokes. I'm not being heavy with my hand. And then I come up here, I'm gonna do the same thing. Now, whenever I just switched from the bottom to the top, I did turn that brush around. Because I had that darker shading orange mixture color on this side of my brush, I turned that so that I can still have that same shading color mixture on that side of my brush. And that way it is going to look fluid and uniform with the bottom. Let me just show you guys up close. Y'all, these colors are going to dry um, and they will be a lot more apparent of the blending. I know it's not, maybe doesn't quite look like it just yet, uh, but it's fun. And I really think that uh, once you guys give it a try, you'll see, y'all, it's not, it's really not that hard. All right, now switch over. I am, oh, that's not my plate, that's another plate. I'm gonna get my yellow now, and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna make a line right up against that shading yellow. I think I can get some white in here, y'all. That'll look good. All right, and now I'm just blending it out. Just taking that brush up maybe about a quarter inch higher into that um, shading yellow to start that blend out. And to blend, it's really just a lot of going right back and forth and back and forth. Y'all, this is also something that whenever you're doing this, you almost have to move kind of fast. Uh, the second that that paint starts drying, I've noticed that you'll start to see like the dried paint underneath, they'll start poking through and you'll see all the little strokes from that. It's just not, it's not the most appealing to your eye. All right. So I kind of got that blended in. Let me just do it just a, a touch more right here. And then I'm gonna grab, a, I, we got just a little bit in the middle. I think I can go ahead and get some white in here. Now, the only brush I got left is a one inch, which is a little big, uh, but we're gonna make it work. All right, got, now I'm just grabbing my white paint, y'all. I got a big booger stuck in the, the lid of this thing. All right, I'm just gonna put just a little bit on here. Now, what I am gonna do, I'm gonna switch back. I just got that white, right? I'm gonna switch back to that yellow brush. I'm cleaning out that shading yellow that I had in that corner because I definitely don't want that shading yellow in this layer. But I found if I try to really fan it out with the white brush, it almost just becomes, like the white really will start taking over. So all I'm doing now, I might even get a little uh, yellow over here on my brush. Uh, I kind of just loaded a little bit of yellow on one side of my brush because I could tell it's just a little too dry. Just kind of blending that out. Same thing over here. Turn that brush around and go the opposite way. Now I feel like that white's almost too much, but we'll see when it dries what we think about it because sometimes it's kind of deceiving when everything is still really wet. Um, it's hard to really know if you're gonna love it, love it. You know, sometimes it just takes letting that paint dry just a little bit. I am just gonna grab just a little bit of yellow and I'm gonna come back in. I do feel like that white's taken over just a bit much for me. So taking a little yellow and just kind of softening those lines back out. Okay. What do y'all think? Y'all, I think the lighting in here does not look good on these colors. It really doesn't. Uh, but we shall see what it looks like when we're done. This was honestly just, uh, I thought about doing this maybe 10 minutes before we went live. I'm like, oh, well, let's try something different. You know, I think y'all have seen us um, do the, um, what's it called? Dry brushing so many times. So if that's obviously what you want to do, that's, you guys know how to do that. Uh, but all right. Now, we are going to obviously get our tape picked up because this is all just trash. I just did that to protect everything whenever I was doing 
my um, blending on my snail. I'm gonna just hit this for a second with the blow dryer. Let's see if I can't get, just get it to maybe where it's just a little tacky and not as wet. I'm just kind of worried at this moment that I'm gonna get my arm in there and make a big old mess. That's good enough. We'll leave it there. Okay. Now, let's just get started shading. Since I did the blending here and here, that, that really sticks with the shading there. So I need to work on my turtle, um, the, I guess, your tail, and the head of my snail, the ladybug, and the bee. So I am going to use, y'all, don't, I don't know what, I don't have a, a handle left on this one, but I'm going to guess this is about a number 10, maybe a 12. And let's just start up here on our B. I'm going to get some beard blue. I can reach it. Whoa! Y'all, that would have been bad. <laughs> a little beard blue. It's, it's kind of um, separated, so get that mixed up just a little bit. Y'all know that um, anytime I'm using these little cups, they do have some water added. That water is just what helps me to get the longer and more fluid strokes. All right. I'm gonna just dip that corner of my brush in um, my paint, and I'm really just gonna set it down and then start pulling it all the way around. Y'all, I know we've, uh, we're gonna start making sure that we are more um, cognizant and aware of our direction uh, when we are teaching you guys how to do stuff. So, uh, been talked about a lot since our paint party, but you wanna make sure that your handle is up and down and not tilted. Um, you have a little bit more uh, stability with that brush whenever your handle is up and down. All right, so that's just a little bit of beard blue. I'm just leaving it like that. I'm not trying to add uh, too much on there. Let's see, Mary says, I mistakenly put on the calendar that I was doing the Boho Rooster on Thursday, April 15th, which is incorrect. I'll be doing it tomorrow on Wednesday, April 14th at 7. Sorry about that. Sounds good, Mary. Um, Debbie says, I wonder if it might look less harsh with Scarecrow White. It could. Uh, honestly, it almost looks like a Scarecrow White right here. Uh, but y'all, this is some of, some of those things that, you know, sometimes you think something's going to look good and you try it out and it's like, uh, maybe not so much, you know? So we'll see what it, once we get it, um, get the piece shaded and start to outline what, it, what we think of it. If I need to change it, I could always change it. Y'all, it's paint. That's the nice thing about it. It's always changeable. All right, I'm gonna switch and get that uh, shading yellow. Let's get a little bit of shading yellow on our bumblebee. Mix this in. I'm gonna stick with that same brush that I'm using. And again, sticking with that corner, kind of loading that corner. You know, this uh, bee is a, kind of a small bee, so I actually have my brush turned sideways, and I'm using the thinner side of it. I'm also just coming right over top of that black. Yes, I will fix that with a script liner. Uh, to me, it's just easier to come take your brush right over top so that it stays fluid with your strokes and your motion, as opposed to start, stop, start, stop, you know, over and over and over. It's easier to just fix little things like that with script liner. All right, so the shade yellow. We're just gonna keep moving down. I think actually I'll do my pink next. Y'all, on the uh, snail, I did a light pink base and I used the mixture, uh, I showed you guys this yesterday, the mixture of light pink and shading pink. This is just about, I'd say, I don't know, 50-50 uh, between our light pink and our shading pink. So I'm, it's almost like a Pepto-Bismol kind of pink. So I'm gonna use that. Again, I'm just dipping that brush right quick. I was just thinking before I get that red in my brush and start on that ladybug, I'd rather kind of do some of these lighter colors. Because especially when you're trying to use that same brush, you will start pulling up uh, old color in there. Especially when I don't have my sink over here to really wash them good. But when I actually paint during the day, I wash my brushes out um, in the sink and just reuse the same brush. But obviously having that running water over top of it, I can make sure it gets really, really clean. I think I'm gonna switch brushes now. Uh, I was Before we do the ladybug, I wanna go ahead and do my turtle. Um, I want something a little smaller because I don't have a whole lot of surface area here. 
All right, so on the turtle, y'all, I have mint green on the head and feet. And then on the shell, it's a combination of sky blue, sea foam, and teal. So it's, it's really just uh, repeating those same kind of colors. Um, hi, Kimberly. Hey, Joyce. How are y'all? So glad you could come hang out. Y'all, we totally, uh, y'all missed it, but uh, we tried something new with some blending down here, and I, I, I don't think any of us are quite sold on it yet, so we might end up changing that. I don't know. We'll see. Let's get some of the more of this done, and then it'll give us a better idea of where we want to go with it. So, uh, I think I'm going to start with, um, I'm going to start with my lime green, and then I'll switch to my teal. Let me get a whole couple of spoons here. Y'all, I have so much stuff on my table that I'm sitting here going, where's this and where's that? But if I didn't have all this stuff on my table, I'd be looking around the whole room for it, you know? I think this one's this one's a number 12 uh, royal brush. I'm just gonna take a little bit of that uh, lime green. And just kind of bring in a little shading down here on your feet. Okay. Let me put this up. Clean out my brush. Uh, Mary says, I really, really like the blending you did on the ladybug flower. Yes, I do too. I don't know if this one's maybe just because it's striped and it looks really dark. Uh, I say leave it alone, and when you get the lettering filled in, you will probably like it. That's a possibility, but then again, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see where it goes. Y'all, obviously, y'all know how many times I've painted something, and I wanted it to turn out a certain way, and it didn't, and so I wait for it to dry, and I repaint it. Sometimes I have to repaint it two or three times before I find something I really, really like. So, you know, for me, it's not a big deal that I don't like it right now uh, because it is just paint. Uh, that's always an option to paint over it. And in fact, that ladybug flower that I posted earlier with the blending on it, that one was the same flower I had at the store this weekend that I used kind of as a sample when I was walking around. And when I did that blending on that one, I actually just, I left all the other paint on there. I just painted right over top of it. I didn't even like rebase coat it or anything, you know, so that's kind of nice. Listen to your mother. Everyone knows moms are always right. That's true. You are. I can't even deny that one. Oh, why am I putting teal on teal, y'all? I need to skip that one because that one's teal. Okay, so I'm using teal right now on uh, anything that's sky blue or seafoam green. So the teal color, obviously, the base coated teal, I'll come back in with a mixture of teal and a couple of drops of black. Now, whenever I did my sample of this, I did not do like a complete square um, when it comes to shading. I almost just kind of came up um, the side and went down one side. I didn't want to overtake the piece because you, all of these little um, pockets, you, I guess I could say, are, would become very dark if I put shading all over the entire square or triangle or rectangle. And so I kind of just did it in a few different places um, to try and combat that. Now down here, I'm looking, I'm trying to look at my sample to make sure I'm doing it the way. I think down here I did have to go all the way down. I did like that. Down here go down, across and down, across and down. All right, and then let's see here, across, down. Go across. I don't think I meant to do right there, but oh well. Okay, uh, let me see. Oh, I think all that I have left is just double checking. These colors kind of start to really blend into each other and it's easy for me to miss, miss one of them when I'm doing this, but I think I got them all. So now we need to do our teal. Y'all, I obviously just use the teal on the sea foam in that sky. So on the teal, I have, I have this pre-mixed. Um, I think I used this on our welcome truck last year on the sample that I was doing and then I kind of just got tired 
of um, mixing this. So this is just a, a combination of teal and black together. Uh, doo, 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 doo. I'll just put it on a plate. I don't happen to have, I don't think I have a little cup of this. And then of course I got that dried paint in that tip. Let's see, is it gonna come out? There we go, that's enough, more than enough. So y'all, that's just a teal with a little bit of black. You could even just do one or two drops of black. I think this one has probably a little bit more in there. Uh, but this is just the easiest way that I can have a good contrast um, that I'm really looking for on this teal color. Across and down. That down kind of went into that other one over here. Across and down. Just loading that corner. And also notice, y'all, I'm trying to keep that in one stroke, if possible, maybe two strokes, but it looks more fluid if you can keep it all in just one. Definitely not always possible. If your brush runs out of paint, you got to get more paint. Okay. All right, so my turtle is shaded. My snail is completely shaded. I need to uh, do my ladybug and then... Y'all, on my sample, I took a, um, a script liner on the uh, ladybug's face and the bee's face, but I would honestly rather do some, uh, use a shader and do that with a, a shader as opposed to a script liner. So I'm just kind of cleaning that brush out. And let's actually do that first. Let's do the white first, and then we will do that um, shading red on our ladybug. I know... I was just using this maybe an hour or two ago, but it already looks like it's starting to separate just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to again try to just keep that on the corner, not trying to go too far over. And I'm keeping that, that paintbrush straight up and down, starting in one corner and going to the next. Now that paint on there is too thick. I don't like how thick it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here and do the same thing over here. That's almost too thick too. I'm going to actually wipe that brush off. There we go. I wanted it to be a little on the thinner side. I'm gonna come back and kind of try to wipe some of that off. I'm just using this napkin over here to pull some of that out because I want it to be real subtle. Notice that difference between what it first was and what it is. Definitely trying to get it to be a lot more subtle. Don't know if I'm gonna like it, but we're gonna try it out. Uh, let's see. Uh, Kimberly says, yeah, I love the ladybug blending. Uh, so now I'm going to need to redo mine too. <laughs> Girl, paint right over top of it. As long as you don't have any really dark colors in there, Kimberly, you can. Now mine, obviously, I had a, a light yellow base, so it was easy for me to paint over top of it. Um, and it went on just fine. But if you're like trying to cover, you know, a darker color, you might need to just throw a quick base coat on there. Uh, Mary says, hey, that's the way it goes. As soon as I see something that I like, I'll repaint it and something to make it look like what I like. Yep, exactly. Uh, Mary says, we're working on Christmas. Um, I've got paint on my screen right here, so it's hard to see. We're working on Christmas in July. Let me know if y'all have anything you really want us to do. Yes, y'all, please, please let us know. Y'all don't know how hard it is sometimes to come up with um, you know, pattern ideas, and then it's like, well, will people like this? Do people want that? You know, it's it's hard to have that crystal ball, you know, that gives us the answers. Because I don't know about y'all, but my ball's been broken and it don't seem to work. All right. Switching over to shading red. I'm going to just stick with that same brush, number 12. Dip in that corner again. Setting it down all the way in the corner. And I'm going to pull it across. Now, I'm already running out of paint. So what I'm going to do, pick up more paint. Okay. I'm not going to start putting down my, my paint where I just stopped. I'm gonna actually move over a little further and start putting my paint down and brushing it up into that previous line. That's what's gonna help with those fluid lines, okay? So again, start in a corner, bring it over. As soon as you're running out of paint, that's fine. Go a little further and pull it back into that line. A nice, smooth lines when you're shading. If you will, just move a little bit further down and pull into uh, your previous line. Okay, uh, shaded, 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 shaded. Okay, I think, I think we're good on shading. So let's hit it with a blow dryer, y'all, and then we can um, 
Let's start outlining and let's see where we get this thing. See if we like the end result or not. transitions down here I don't know that it's going to show up as much um, in the center that it would at the top yeah stacked presents Kimberly that is on the list as well like this triple stack presents and the triple stack pumpkin I know we will have again this year um, those were just really big hits last year I think because you could take that pattern and really make it into a million different things you know and so um, it was just very popular with people and I also hear based on especially people that sold them that a lot of their customers liked those patterns too. So, all right. Um, y'all, this is that old script liner. Uh, the one that y'all been telling me to throw away. I want you to watch because it's going in my trash can right now. Goodbye. It's done. Okay. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to find, I've got like three or four of these. Y'all, I've been breaking in new brushes, okay? So as you can see, they're all the same brush. Uh, but some of them have been fanning out a lot, and some of them are still real thin. So um, I kind of just pick up ones based on what I, what I really feel like I need. And then half the time, y'all, because I am using so many different ones, like I'll pick one up and I'll start using it, and I'm like, eh, I don't like that one. Throw it in the water, you know? And so um, I'm just going to kind of pick one, and we'll see if we like it. If not, I'll just switch to one of my other ones. Uh, because I really gave up that old rickety brush, you know, so it's nice to be able to have, have some of, uh, you know, newer brushes where my, my bristles are nice and soft and not, you know, just worn out because that one was definitely worn out. Okay. I'm going to just start up here at the top. What do y'all think about this view? Does this make it a little bit easier, uh, on this piece? This piece, I think, is 28 inches tall, and so I was kind of struggling with um, just being able to get it all in the camera frame, so I thought, uh, oh, just turn the camera, you know. All right, y'all, so remember I told y'all I brought that, that yellow right over top of this? Look how fast it is to just clean that right up. No big deal. Just taking that brush and bringing it around. Y'all, also, whenever I'm doing uh, my script liner, I've said it a few times, but I think it's one of those things you, we could never really say it enough. Um, when I first put down that script liner, I am not using any pressure. I'm literally just dragging that brush along. Now, when I'm doing really long strokes, the further I go, when I notice I'm running out of paint on my brush, that is when I start to put down more pressure. But when I first set that, that brush down, I am not putting any pressure on there. Just very, very light. Kind of let your brush guide you type thing. You know, I still got a lot of wet paint on here, so 
I'm gonna do my best, uh, but this paint ain't looking to work out with me at the moment. Um, I'm just looking here. I'm just gonna looking and thinking out loud. I almost am feeling like I might need to come in with my brush and do half white, half black and do like a blended face because I almost feel like that's just a little bit much. So let me actually do that right quick um, because I'm more worried about once I get the eyes on there, I just don't know. Ugh, I don't know if I'm going to like it. So let me just try this. We'll see if I like it. But I want to get this on there that way it can dry uh, so we can get to finishing this piece out. So all I'm doing, I'm taking this probably number 12. I'm just doing that half load and half load. So black on one side, white on the other. I don't know that this black is necessarily going to cover the white, but I think it will. Okay, so you like that a little bit better. It almost is more of a subtle... Um, Subtle shade. Oh, y'all, I like that way better. What do y'all think? Yeah, I definitely like that better. Okay. That's exactly why I was like, let me just pick up the brush and do it. Because it was it was something that I just felt like needed, needed a little fixing. I didn't know what it was, but it just needed a little bit of help. Uh, let's see. Put the light orange between the yellow and the orange. I could do that. This was all supposed to be yellow colors. And now you have options. Yes, 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 love, love you. Lots better to watch and view. Good. View's good, awesome. That way is way better. Thank you, Debbie. I thought so. Okay, so y'all, I'm just gonna keep on finishing script watering. Y'all, I have that squirrel brain, so I'll be in the middle of something and I'll just dead stop and be like, oh, let me switch and go do this. <laughs> That's kind of what I was just doing. There we go. Pull this one up. Y'all, Victoria um, drew this pattern, so obviously this is gonna be one of those uh, patterns that is free for our Academy customers. For those of you that like to, um, you know, cut your own yard art and that sort of thing. So, big thanks to Victoria. She always does just the cutest stuff, y'all. I'm just kind of bringing that around. Also, y'all notice that sometimes my, it's like my, uh, my strokes. As I'm going around and I'm kind of pulling this in, some of my strokes are a little bit thinner, some are a little thicker. And so when you see me coming back over top with that brush, what I'm really trying to do is get the thickness of that line consistent all the way across. So that's the time when you'll start to see me use a little bit more pressure on my brush is when I'm really just trying to uh, create that consistency of my line. Other than that, I don't use very much pressure whenever um, you know, I start putting that brush down. I kind of start out really, really light-handed. I don't like that little, boop. there we go. Same thing over here. Honestly, I just now thought about it. Uh, it's a little too late now that I got the black on there, but this, uh, the pink could really be outlined in um, uh, shading pink because I have that light pink as the base, and then we have what I call a medium pink. It's really just a mixture of light and shading. Uh, and so it, I think the snail, the head and the tail would look really cute outlined in um, uh, shading pink. I'm trying to kind of concentrate and make sure that these come out looking like a circle. I think I've told you guys before, perfect circles for me, it's just hard to do, uh, especially when they're small. Like this one's on the, a little bit of a bigger side, but the small ones like on the eyeball of the bee and the ladybug, those circles are just really hard for me. Whoa! Went over that line a little too far. Y'all, when I'm doing, especially if I'm doing eyeballs, I do try to stay on the inside of that circle. I try not to go on the outside like I just did because then it doesn't look like a circle anymore. 
So whenever I come outside of that line, just like I did right now, just take your finger and, and, and pick it up if you can, if it's not too wet. If it is too wet, then um, you can wait till it dries and fix it. Y'all, my hand, <laughs> I just got done saying I'm not good at circles and here I am doing almost a, a crooked straight line in the corner over here. Like that took me way too long to just do some eyeballs all right now on this mouth I'm gonna almost just offload a lot of that excess paint and just dip the tip of it in because this is a really really small line right I don't want it looking too thick it's kind of hard to do at this angle let me actually turn this Turn it this way just for a second, or maybe I'll just turn my chair this way. Make sure you guys can see it. Maybe this also, especially in these smaller areas, this might be a little bit easier with like a number two as opposed to trying to use a number four. Oh, and let me see. Up here, I also forgot this on the wings. Um, I kind of just came in here, the center down here where your line in between your wings starts, kind of just bring that up and use a little bit of pressure right before you pull it up. So I'm setting that brush down and a little bit of pressure, a little pressure, and then pull up. And that's what will kind of give you that wispy line at, um, at the end. And then I just kind of come in here and just do a few little, almost like sprouts coming out for their wings. Some of those, those were really thin. Thicken them up just a little bit. And then same thing over here. Very light, almost no pressure on there. Just getting you a little bit of a wing there. Hey Carla, how are you doing, sweetheart? Thank you so much. All right, uh, now let's just start rigging on a turtle. Bring this down. I don't know um, where you guys, where everybody's at. I think most of you guys that are on here are local. Uh, but what is up with, because we went to the fair Sunday, and while we were there, it was just so hot. I looked at my husband, and I was like, is summer here already? And then it's like this week, you know, is, um, I looked at the weather on, on this week, and it's like 70s and rain, and this week, and it seriously felt like it was 95. It wasn't, but, you know. Like, oh, yeah, Texas weather. But I, I honestly prefer the heat than I do the rain and nasty humidity and all that. Like I washed my hair this morning and I was like, oh, well maybe you should blow dry it and straighten it. And I was like, nope, there's no point. This weather is just too nasty. It's just gonna mess up all that work. I also forced myself yesterday to get outside and uh, Polly and Glitter, several Christmas things that I've been working on. Because after I looked at that weather report, I was like, I'm not going to be Polly in this whole week. Because it's just a lot of nasty days. And y'all know, Polly can be very, very fickle. And uh, there is nothing more uh, disheartening than when you've spent hours on a project. And it's done and it's perfect. And then you go to Polly it and that Polly ruins it. And so Polly's just one of those things, I don't touch it. If it's humid and wet and gross outside, I just steer very clear of it, y'all. Uh, happy to see, uh, thank you, Carl. Hey, Carl, this is happy to see y'all painting again. Yeah, I know, I felt like we were off for a little bit. Uh, we've just been, oh, busy, y'all, busy, busy. Uh, Kimberly says, when I left Pearland Saturday from the party, my car said it was 95 over there. Y'all, we went to, uh, my husband and my daughter and her friend, we took them to the Montgomery County Fair on Sunday, 
and um, it did not dawn on me because you know the weather's been kind of chilly for the last several months obviously but we haven't had that real hot weather but as soon as we're pulling in I was like uh, I didn't bring any sunscreen and you know I just didn't it just didn't dawn on me because we've not used sunscreen since I don't know last summer and so I was like man and then we're out there and y'all it was just toasty and it was like real stagnant air I think that's what made it so hot you know um, so I told the girls like well we'll do this for a few hours and then we had um, another engagement for six o'clock and so it was like you know we, we could stay here till about 3 3 30 something like that by I think it was like 2 30 I don't remember what time it was but the girls were like okay we're ready to go <laughs> it was too much they're like, it's hot. We're dizzy. I'm like, okay. I always say that I miss summer. Um, I don't mind the heat when it comes to if I'm working. I actually like the heat. I like to sweat when I work. I don't know why I'm just weird like that. Uh, but if I'm not working and I'm sweating, yeah, no, I don't, I don't like that. Does anybody else have a weird quirk like that about themselves? All right, y'all, I am gonna turn this because I need to work on this turtle's face. It's too hard to do it all the way across over there. So I'm just gonna turn it right quick. I also need to get some white on here. Oh no, I did this one in black. Never mind. I did his eyes in black. Taking that script liner, I'm kind of really setting it down inside of that uh, CNC line and just pulling it down. I'm a lot better at ovals than I am circles. And just leaning that brush over until it fills in that that our etch line and just pulling it around you could have also I don't know why I'm thinking of all these things after I'm already putting black on here uh, but the head and the feet would probably look really good outlined in um, dark green or even a mixture of like dark and lime green Line is just coming out so good. And then same thing. I'm going to kind of take some of that excess off of here to kind of set that brush down inside of those lines. Whoa! Came out a little far right there. down here uh, for the, the words because the reason I'm liking red orange is because I have that orange in here and I always feel like this red orange is a great pop I know it looks red but it is red orange what do y'all think about doing that color on our words I think it might actually look really really good I'm gonna wash out that script liner we're gonna leave this sign to the end, that way y'all guys can help me decide exactly what we're gonna do. Why is my thing doing this? There we go. Uh, but I'm definitely not 100% sold. Uh, they say it's the worst time for the sunburn. Yeah, Debbie. And see, yesterday when I got on my live, I asked, you know, after I get on a live, I look at it just to make sure everything looks good. And you could really see my nose and my forehead had uh, definitely gotten a little sun on Sunday. All right, so we need to uh, we need to get white on here. I need to get black polka dots on my ladybug, and then we need to do our words. So I think I actually want to get some white on these eyes first. Uh, hmm, yeah, because I want to be able to I'm trying to see if I need a. Uh, Trying to decide if I want to get another brush right quick. Um, what I ended up doing with these eyes is these eyes are circles. And as I said earlier, for me, it's really, really hard um, to get a good circle. Um, so what I ended up doing is kind of turning them into um, ovals. I think this one's too big. I'm going to try this one. This is a round tip. Uh, it's a number six. It's just a small little brush. 
Let me see, because y'all, whenever I did these eyes, I have y'all know I repainted them a couple different times because I did not like how they looked, but I definitely preferred them to be um, an oval for me because like I said, I just really struggle at great circles. So I kind of just set my brush down and almost just, I, I'm using a lot of pressure, just kind of pushing that outward and trying to create a nice, beautiful oval. Not the best, but it'll do. Okay. See, now it's kind of filling in these lines right here. Let me see. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm going to do the same thing right here. Kind of just creating a little oval. That one I went a little too far with. definitely went too far with y'all I don't know about y'all but I've I've me personally I kind of I just struggle with the smaller detailed work because I do have such a heavy hand small small details are just not um, they're not my strongest you know uh, paint quality I guess you could say I don't feel the most confident in them because I do struggle in smaller areas. So Y'all see, I just keep putting the paint down and then I'm picking it back up because I'm like, eh, I don't like that. Okay, I think I'm gonna just leave it like this for now and wait. When it dries, I am gonna come back over and touch it up with some black, uh, but I, I did just prefer the um, oval kind of look to the eyeballs. All right, uh, I'm going to switch back now and do uh, some script liner. Actually, you know, before I do that, I need to get some polka dots on here, y'all. This pattern um, is so fun. There's a lot of different pieces to it, so I'm sitting here just trying to remember to do it all. Ah! No, I've got wet paint everywhere. <sighs> you got to love that when you spill paint on top of wet paint and see that's wet right now so let me see let me just take this corner and see if i can Ugh. i have to fix that oh the joys y'all the joys when your paint's wet and you have slippery hands it's all good because again it is paint we can always fix it all right, switch back over here. I'm just using a um, little dauber that I got. Which one? What size is this? This is, I think it's a half inch. I can't even read it. Oh, no, three quarters. Three quarters inch. It just happens to be the smallest one I have here next to me, so it's what I'm using. Ugh, that's got too much water in it, so let me come and get a little fresh black paint. There we go. Sometimes I like some of them to kind of come off that edge too. And get a little more. Leave it at that. Not too fancy, nothing too hard. I am gonna let that dry, but I do need to come back with a highlight definitely right across that top. And the same thing on this B, I want some highlights on here, uh, but I've got a lot of wet paint, so I'm gonna have to just let that be for a second until I'm ready to come in and mess with that. Can give yourself a little smile on the B. Same thing on the ladybug. All right, come in here. I'm gonna just do a few. Oh, yo, that's got some black in it. No worries, wipe my brush off. Try to cover some of that up. And then here on my snail, I kind of, y'all notice I'm loading and then I'm almost offloading. I don't want, I don't want this to be too um, heavy. Now remember, 
any imperfections that you have in that center because it is kind of hard to get in that center. Perfect thing for some highlights. Literally throw a highlight over top of it. You can make it look really, really good. So if you're starting to you know, try to blend on stuff and you're like, man, I like all of this except this one spot, that is totally fine. In fact, that's really normal. I feel like that all the time. Um, so you know, go ahead and just throw a highlight over top of it. As long as you like the rest of it, it's all good. All right, now I have very little paint on my brush. I'm kind of just using just what's there. Trying to also make sure I'm looking at my sample, just trying to make sure I'm getting it where I want it. That one didn't go all the way. Y'all, this is very light um, when I'm doing my highlights. I almost don't have hardly any pressure on there. Um, I'm looking a little funky. Here, I'm just going to go straight across. Same here. Little line. And then now down here on my little swishes, I just kind of bring in just a light little touch. And then the same thing down here at the feet. Just a light little wispy line. Now, my eyeballs on all of my animals are going to need... Like the, obviously these are black eyes, so I'm gonna need a white drop. Y'all, this is so wet. I don't see it quite working out and staying where I want it, but. That might be something I need to come back and do uh, once it is dry. But yes, this is incredibly wet right now. So it honestly will probably end up spreading out and looking like a mess. But I'd like to at least give you guys the idea of all that finishing touch and what it's what it's gonna look like. That is a lot of paint. So I can't even get this one. This one almost looks like a heart in the center. I can't seem to get get it to look like a good circle because it's just super, super wet. I love this. I need to get this blank. Yes. This one's fun. It is um it definitely has a lot of um, a lot of action going on on it, but I really think it's just a fun one to, you could really like dress it up, dress it down kind of thing, meaning you could do it on the simpler end or you could really make it difficult, not difficult, but um, you know, have a lot of things going on, a lot of pattern, a lot of color. It's um, definitely, the sky's the limit. Adding a little bit of white around here. Obviously, this is hard right now because it's very wet. Um, okay, so as far as highlights go, I think I look good over here. Now, let's start working on our... Um, actually, before I do that, I do want to take on these eyes at the top. I did the eyes white, and I do need a black dot. Again, y'all, this is something you need to do when it's dry. So I'm just doing it to show you guys, uh, but... I'm probably going to have to fix it after it dries because I have a feeling it's going to end up just being a, a bit of a mess, but we shall see. See, <laughs> it's like, I don't even, it's like coming out gray. does not look good at the moment but I think you get the idea it does need a black dot if you look really close here it looks crazy it looks like gray like the there's almost like a white coat over top of that black dot I just put down all right so we're gonna put the black away this part I feel like I'm done with other than when it dries I definitely need to do a few touch-ups but let's focus now on the summertime part um, I'm thinking red orange I didn't see anybody tell me no so I'm gonna go with red orange. Okay, let me move this. I'm sorry y'all, but for the sake of me being able to, let me just see if I can do it like that. There we go. That way you guys can still see. Move some of my junk. Got so much stuff up here. Straighten this 
sound for you guys just a little bit. There we go. Okay, now, I am gonna be working on this uh, summertime, the words. So I am gonna use a script liner. I am gonna use, I think it's number 19, red orange. Red. There's your red orange. Um, this one does have obviously water added in it. It's really separated. So let's see. Yo, know, when I'm doing letters, I like that paint to almost be on the verge of being watery. Um, for me, I just feel like it's a little easier and I can move a little faster. Because y'all know me, I, if I'm not moving fast, it just bothers me. I'm like, nope, that ain't gonna work, you know. Um, so I'm really just going to kind of start coming in and putting the brush down inside of those crevices and just kind of filling in the words. Also uh, thinking, now that I'm seeing this on here, I do like this color. I think it looks good with these, um, with the kind of color scheme I have going on. But I think you could even also use, if you don't like this color, you feel like maybe that's a little too, um, too red, you could even use shading orange or even mix a little bit of shading orange with this to kind of tone down the red. If that's something that you know, you feel like you would want to do something a little different. Those are a couple of options that I think would still look really cute. Now here I am using a little bit of pressure, but I do also have a lot of paint in that brush. So I'm almost just using the pressure to kind of fan those bristles out to really fit inside of um, these etching lines that are here. That's kind of how I do it. So I set my brush down and then I do push down to make those lines kind of thicken. And not only that, I'm really trying to get the edges of my brush to be in the line. And when some of these letters are just right with their width, like this N is great. Cause I can really control my ability to stay inside of that line with um, either adding a little more pressure or letting up a little bit on the pressure. I even feel like I need to really add a little water to this. But we'll see how far I get before I might decide. Just pick up the water bottle. All right, y'all. Also, um, I know Mary and I have both been on live a little bit the last 24 hours, so I, I don't remember which video was in. Uh, but we have been talking about doing uh, a paint party for the Academy every quarter. So the next quarter, we're going to do BYOB, which is bring your own blank. So maybe if you have a project that you that has been sitting around, you know, that you feel like it's, it's hard or you've tried to mess with it and it's just not going where you want it to and you've given up on it or, or maybe you're like, man, I, I know this. I'm missing something, something could be better on here, but I don't know what it is. You know, that's the kind of thing that you can bring um, to our next party. And it doesn't even have to be ours. You know, if you've got a project that you've had, that you got from somewhere else, that's fine. You can still bring that, you know. Uh, but we thought that that would be also really fun to be able to do some real specific hands-on with you guys on, you know, exactly what your maybe struggling with or needing help with. So the next one will be bring your own blank. And then after that, we'll provide a blank for you and we'll kind of do the trade off. So one party, um, you'll get a new blank from us and then the next party will be bring your own blank. But having those every quarter now, we'll do those every three months. I just think that that's gonna be um, a lot more beneficial for people so that we can make sure that we're helping to support you guys and help you meet your, your painting goals and where you're trying to go with it. 
So hopefully you guys can all make the next one. I know some of you guys were planning on coming, but then had to cancel for due to other um, prior engagements and that sort of thing. So I really hope I can see a few more uh, new faces next time that we didn't get to meet this last time. I definitely really, really enjoyed um, getting to meet everybody first off and put a name to a face that was just so nice. And then I really learned a lot from watching everybody and, and walking around the room and talking with people and helping people. I learned a lot more about what I can do, um, you know, whenever we're trying to teach uh, to be hopefully a little bit more um, clear and uh, more directional on certain steps like shading and outlining. Like that was definitely a theme as we heard that uh, shading and outlining is, is really hard. I think shading more, a lot of people were really more hung up on shading. Um, and so it's really good for us to know that so that we can just try to make sure that we're supporting y'all a little bit better. Giving y'all more tips and tricks and things like that that will be beneficial. And then just a little eye. All right, y'all. There are my words. Hey, it just, it, this isn't upside down for y'all, right? This is right side up. Yeah, it should be good. Okay, it should be. Okay, what do we think? Do we like the, I, I'm actually really liking this now. Um, now my next question is, what do we do for outline i don't know that i want to outline it but i do want something else on it i just don't know what so what do you guys think uh good debbie i'm so glad to hear that and carla yes uh yeah okay carla you, that was an old comment about getting this blank um but yeah we had so much fun on saturday okay y'all hmm this is hard sometimes to decide hmm i don't know if i want to uh I don't know. See the shading on the sign does look good. Yes, it does. Okay, mom, help, or somebody help me decide. I feel like the sign needs something, but I don't know what. Maybe like a light, wispy outline that's not all the way on the profile, that's kind of close around the profile. Uh, and Kimberly, the, the letters do need highlights. You're 100% correct, but it's got to dry. Um, maybe a 3D... 3D lull? Hmm? A 3D look. Oh, yeah. Okay, so as soon as these do dry, yes, I will. Uh, see the shading on the sign? Does look good. Listen to your mom. Okay, I don't know what to do on this uh, perimeter. So, let's see. We are going to mess with it and just see what... I think I kind of like that. Just a little different. Now, I am noticing one more thing I do want to clean up. I am going to come in. I want to put a few white highlights down here, too. Uh, but this line right here above where I kind of just did that wispy uh, line, I need to come in and just fill it in just a little bit and make it a smooth line. I don't know if y'all could even see that, but this line wasn't smooth and it was driving me crazy. So I'm just picking up that, that plate because these colors I did mix. All right, smooth that out. Now, let me get a little bit of white. Oh, I think I need a couple highlights down here. And then I'm going to be done with this guy. How cute is this, y'all? I know this was kind of a longer live. I'm sorry. Uh, but this, this blank definitely just has a lot going on. But he's just so cute. I'm gonna leave it like that. Now, when it dries, I am going to come in and uh, do a shadow on like the right side of all the letters. I would say definitely with black, just to kind of tie it into the rest of the sign. So that is, I do need to do that. As well as when it dries, I need to touch up my eyes. 
the eyes on my bee and my ladybug need a little touching up. But other than that, that is what I've come up with. So let me show you. Ta-da! Screw back a little bit, Ashley. What do you guys think? End result, yay, nay. Do you like the, bl uh, the blended sign at the bottom? Or do you prefer the um, dry brush? Let's see. Blended. I'm trying to find a place to pick this up. Uh, blended. Dry brush. Y'all, when that camera's turned around, it's hard to figure out like where where to exactly hold these pieces. But obviously, y'all, there's a million different ways you could really do this. It's a fun pattern. It's something that I want you guys to have fun with and enjoy getting to do. Um, so let's see, a uh, white outline around the sign. I did do a little bit of uh, highlights around the sign, yes. And then, yeah, Kimberly, I like both. Debbie Blended, awesome. Well, there's a couple different choices for you guys. So, all right, uh, let's see. Uh, I don't have the Academy calendar in front of me, but I want to say, oh, Mary's coming on tomorrow. Yo, look at me, go, paint on my forehead. Mary's coming on tomorrow instead of Thursday. Uh, she had a prior engagement on Thursday, so she just has to move her live to Wednesday this week. And then um, y'all look for me uh, tomorrow. I'm hoping in the AM to do part two of the Flamingo Gnome. So uh, this live was in um, Painters in the Making yesterday. I did the blending on it. So tomorrow we're going to, I had to get it base coated after I got done on that live. And so I think tomorrow we're going to go ahead and do, finish out this piece. And then I won't be live again till next week after that. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Thanks for talking and chit chatting and, um, you know, just coming and enjoying this nasty afternoon with me. So we will see you guys soon. Catch Mary tomorrow in Academy, at, I believe tomorrow night. Look for me in the morning um, in Painters in the Making to do the Flamingo Gnome. And that is kind of what we got going on next. So those of you that uh, are looking for some blanks that we're out of, we will be restocking those this week. Hopefully they're all back in stock by Saturday, uh, but we are working on that. So thank y'all so much for being here. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Stay dry, stay warm, because I know it's about to get a little chilly out. And we will see you guys soon. Bye, everybody.